A little sports a couple of sports a stories. No, I want to not mean is what I was saying. I know, but this but, is an okay. Well, I'll hold this for later. Okay, uh, you want nonsense? What? What's the what is what's the third? Cow Na naked. naked. Man. And Shh. What? What? Yeah. With a That's tourist? What? Oh, that I don't know. I'm not. I don't didn't see the word multiple stories. I don't, here. did not see the word tourist. Yeah, he's anywhere tourist. in it. Russian, yeah. a Russian oh, tourist. Russian. He's a tourist. Oh, Mellor's already. You know what? Good detective work in there. And then he was gored. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he got yeah, what he deserved. You look. You mess with the bull. You're you gonna get, get the, the horns. horns. Yeah. Like, it's a good story, wasn't it? Hey. Yeah. Woo. It, Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Evgeny Kushnov. 26 uh, I'm sure. was arrested in Thailand. It's all good. He, he was stripped down and sidled over to a male bull. And then I think that's where yeah. your imagination should take over and the facts are the facts. Okay, go I had another one for you. An Eastern Iowa man shot his father following an argument over stinky feet. So he, he, an Eastern Iowa man is accused of shooting his father after an, an argument about his stinky feet. David Carpenter was arrested and charged with attempted murder in Burlington on Sunday, according to KCCI, a sister station in Des Moines. David called police and told them he shot his father, identified as William Carpenter, in the face, according oh. to court documents. And he's lived? The station reported that police talked to William in the hospital and he told officers that the argument started over David's stinky feet. David also faces a child endangerment charge since two children were in the home at the time of the shooting. So wait, it was over stinky the, feet. the son's stinky feet? Stinky feet. So yeah. he was accusing his son of having stinky feet. And he's yes. like, my feet aren't stinky, dad. Take that. Take a bullet to the face. Yes. I guess that's how they dispense justice. In eastern Iowa. I don't know. Hmm. Just saying. Um, uh, I've got another one for you. Here's a medical, uh, some medical advice. Or just here's some medical information. You do with it what you want. How about that? Is that a better way to describe it? Four or more cups of coffee a day raises the risk of a heart, a heart attack or a stroke. Okay, what, like what, are, what, what constitutes a cup? Eight ounces again? Are we dealing with? Are we really gonna? We're gonna. We're gonna nitpick the ounces. Like if it's an eight ounce, it's a ten ounce, or even a twelve ounce. Well, I think there is a definition of what a cup of coffee is, because look, if we're playing with ten ounce cups of coffee, and then we're saying four cups of coffee, that's forty ounces, as opposed to I think if you're if we're talking about six or eight ounce cups of coffee, who drinks a six ounce cup of coffee? I think a cup is eight ounces though. I think that is what is defined as a cup. Drinking four or more cups of coffee a day can raise the risk of a heart attack or a stroke, according to a new study. These studies, researchers found that consuming over 400 milligrams of caffeine on most days of the week, whatever that plays out to, could increase the susceptibility of otherwise healthy people to cardiovascular disease. Around one in five participants in the Indian study about 19.6% 19, uh, 19 consume that much caffeine every day, which translates to around four cups of coffee, 10 cans of fizzy pop, or two energy drinks. I think you drink. Uh, I drink four, four cups, four cups of oh, coffee. Yeah. I drink two here and two at home. So you better watch it. I, I mean, listen, with your if, booze in yeah, I was going to say, if the alcohol and, and golf course smokes aren't going to get me, it could be the coffee. Mellor's got a giant vat of coffee in there every day. Yeah, Mello, you're you're a four cup of coffee guy. Yes, this is alarming. Might have to cut back my coffee intake. Well, you don't do any of the other stuff. You don't eat poorly. I know, you but what smoke, I don't like to hear drink. is that perfectly healthy people could be at greater risk of heart disease or heart attack or stroke if you drink four or more cups of coffee. I don't like that. Then I have to cut back. I don't like feeling tired though either. Perhaps more sleep remedy that well i gotta tell you though i've been sleeping seven eight nine hours and i wake up more tired oh really yeah i've been having terrible nights of sleep just waking up like well uh, when like i say eight hours of sleep there are a couple of at least two or three wake-ups in the middle like i'm waking up early now like and when i say early like i'm going to bed at 
last night at 11. And then I roll over and I look at the clock and it's one. And I'm like, I, I didn't even sleep. I probably didn't even get into a REM stage. So I'm, I'm doing poorly. I, this can't be good for me. If you were the AD at a high school, would you hire Connor Stallions to coach your football team? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Somebody in Detroit uh, had the same feeling. Ex-Michigan staffer Connor Stallions is now coaching at a Detroit high school. He is a uh, Mumford he, High School. He's got a lot of knowledge. I would just tell him, don't cheat. Like, Defensive coordinator is what Connor Stallions is being. He's working as a volunteer, too. He's not being paid. But uh, he now has a job. as he steals some money. DC. Um, well, you guys remember what his side hustle was at Michigan? Uh, what was it? It was a, f uh, a vacuum. Yeah, no, it va was vacuums. vacuums. Yeah, yeah. He, would, he would like buy, I think, broken vacuums and fix them up and sell them. See, I that think that so was just the front, though. That is so like. But he used to leave them on the porch of his home. There would just be a bunch of vacuums on the porch. I was arguing with Shay on Twitter or uh, text today because he he's a hardball hater because he's Sparty. He's got Sparty blood in him. And Shay's out there. I'll tell anyone who will listen. I got the under at plus one sixty five or one forty five under eight and a half wins for the Chargers. And I said to Shay via text, it was like. Well, first of all, the number seems odd. And by the way, Jim Harbaugh is a winner wherever he goes. History tells us that. But the team won five games last year. I know their quarterback got hurt, but they've had to like redo their roster, right? Because of salary issues. I thought eight and a half was the was, number was exceptionally high, especially considering the division they sit in with. And the quarterbacks uh, got a bad case of plantar fasciitis. He just had the uh, boot taken off. Are you going over or under eight and a half wins for the Chargers? Eight and a half is high, like you said. But but still, like, the track record's the track record. I don't bet against, put it this way. I don't know if I would bet on Harbaugh. I don't bet against Harbaugh. Amen to that. I won't bet either way on it. Uh, and here's a story that's relatable to something that happened in Crosstalk with Black and, and Carr. Um. Tampa Bay uh, Rays have activated right-handed pitcher Ryan, is it Pepio? Pe Pepio? Spelled P-E-P-I-O-T. Pepio. French right-hander. Ryan Pepio. It's Ryan Pepio. Uh, why did you ask? Uh, why are you mentioning Mr. Pepio? He's been on the 15-day injured list for the past month with an infection in his right knee that was like, likely caused by a spider bite during Ooh. the All-Star break. He was hospitalized in New York last month due to the infection and received antibiotics in his right knee. The swelling in his knee had reached the point where he needed help to walk into the hospital. Wow. The first couple of days when I went into the hospital, it was real bad, he said. I couldn't put any weight on my right leg. The first day, it was pretty swollen, a lot of fluid, and it was kind of slushy. That's gross. That's like the, so your, the point your I'm making is, is the thing that you tweeted out there that everyone is now, you know, calling gross and horrible and everything else. I didn't tweet it out. It wasn't me that did it. It was you. I am trying to not get to that point with this bump on my arm. So the bump on, I'm so, just telling you when you don't know where something has come from or you notice something, you take care not, of it. it's not a bad idea to give it a little wash, put a little antibiotic on it, cover it with a Band-Aid, and go about your business. By the way, that wasn't Waddle's nipple that I tweeted no, out. It was, it, was, it, it was a growth. It was a pus-filled uh, infection on my back. Now, just speaking of bites, do you know a lot of people are claiming, including Pat the Designer, that you, I never had heard of this, that this, you may have had a cicada mite bite. No, that's not true. But I do have a cicada story. What is, I didn't know that there were cicada mite bites. Yeah, I just heard about these. Multiple yeah, people are, have been tweeting us about this, that an oak mite bite from cicadas. That's what Laura says. That's what Jack says. That's what Pat, the designer, said. What are these? Uh, they are a result of what happened uh, you know, we had the giant cicada right. infestation. Um, I'm trying to get the, the article to come up. Bug bites in Chicago area might actually be from mites thanks to the uh, cicada invasion. Um, according to a cicada expert, Dr. Gene Krisky from Mount St. Joseph University, a particular mite known as the oak leaf itch mite can be seen in large amounts following a cicada emergence. 
So when the cicadas come out, the mites come with it. Mm. So just be careful, you know, give the, you know, if you got a bite or you got, a, you know, something on your skin that doesn't look normal, get it checked out, all, get it washed, wash it up nice. And get it, it washed. If it gets worse, then yeah, get it checked. Yeah, wash this thing. Put a little uh, bacitracin on it, then throw a uh, Band-Aid on it. The grossest thing about Waddles, whatever that was, and you could see back? the, yeah, you could see the picture. Oh, it was awful. That is, are the three white heads. Yeah. If, if you zoom in with pus. your phone. Yeah, it was gross. The, the white heads are just. If you had that, wouldn't you want to try to not get another one of those infections? Yes. And by the way, when the doctor cut that thing open. When was this? This was last summer. Oh, this was a year ago. Yeah. When he cut it open, they pack it with this, like, it almost looks like a long piece of tape that's got an antibiotic on it. And they pack, like, it's, it's basically, it's a hole in your skin. And then after, like, two days, I said, well, how the hell do I get this out? He goes, just have somebody in your house pull it out. Wait, they put something in the they hole? They pack it. They pack it they with pack antibiotic. The they pack the hole with the antibiotic. And it's like a tape, piece of tape. It's an antibiotic tape. Ugh. So you know what my, my thought was? I don't want to have another one of these on my forearm. Okay. So we're I'm just going to take care yeah. of that. We're the bad. So that's all I got for you today.